welcome back to my channel. My name is Taylor Ellis and this is a secondhand librarian where I just talk about bookish things every week. Um, today I actually wanted to discuss a question that I feel like I get pretty often which is how I came to own a bookstore at the age of 26. Um, it's still just like too good to be true for me especially because secondhand hasn't even been a year old. Um, and so I still feel like I'm just like adjusting to the fact that this is my full-time job and, and like what I do to survive. So yeah, I decided to just discuss, you know, like how I came up with this idea, um, kind of like what I want to do moving forward and things like that. So let's just jump right into it. Um, so like I said, secondhand's not even a year old. Um, I want to say I officially kind of released it to the world last July, maybe like the second week of July, and um, it came at a great time. So prior to this, I worked at a medical office as a receptionist, and it wasn't a bad job by any means, but it just definitely like was not what I like to do. Um... <laughs> I'm definitely more of like um an introvert kind of like a private person somewhat and it just was super uncomfortable talking to strangers about intimate details every single day so yeah I got furloughed due to COVID and I was pretty excited about that um sorry my cat Miso is down below me being very cute so if I keep looking down it's because of him um but yes I got furloughed due to COVID and that was just kind of great because I feel like it gave me time to just like stop and think. And I don't think that we have that luxury ever because we're just constantly on the go, always doing things, work, school, relationships. And so we don't really have that time to just like be still and think about what we want to be doing with our lives. Um, so yeah, that time came at a really, awesome time in my life. I had just turned 26 a few months prior and I just was so confused. Like I knew from the time I was a child that I either wanted to be a librarian, be a writer, or own my own bookstore. And so I think that that's still why I'm just like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this is life because it's like a childhood dream that's been realized. And um, I don't know, I don't know too, too, too many people that can say that <laughs> I don't know too many people that can say that that's where they ended up so I think I'm just pretty pretty excited that, that is my life um so another thing people ask me is like well how like how did you plan how did you get starting and things like that so during this time of being furloughed I had maybe like a personal collection of like 200 books at that time and I was super used to just like giving out book recommendations to friends, letting friends borrow books, things like that. Um, and while I had a huge collection, not a lot of those were new books because new books are really expensive. Um, not that I don't think that they should be, it's just that for me, it's not, I don't think it's as accessible as it can be. Um, you know, when you see like the popular books floating around or, um, like I recently got a quart of silver flames and that was like $30. That's a lot. That's a lot of money. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely like knew that accessibility was something that I was super into as well as like sustainability by having used books. And so I thought, well, what if I just sell off my collection to people at like an affordable rate? Um, because then it's like pre-loved books, books that I've cared about, that I've known, that I've read, that I can love and talk about with people, but they're also priced at a pretty decent price point to make sure that anyone that wants to read that book has the money to do so. So with that sort of like mission statement, um, I created a website for my bookstore so I have somewhat of a background in computer science, but like not excessive, but enough to help me kind of create the website that I wanted. And 
I was very intentional with the type of website that I wanted to create. Um, so I knew that my bookstore would be completely virtual for some time. Um, and so I kind of wanted to create an experience that when you went onto my website, it felt like how I would want you to feel walking into like my physical space. Um, and I also just feel like there's a corner of like the used book market that isn't as curated as what I have. Um, so because it started out with like my personal selection of books, that is kind of the mantra of which I continue to get books from my store. So it's either books that I've loved, books that I've wanted to read, books that I think people would love to read. Um, and so I don't just put anything on my bookstore. It's very intentional with like the types of books that I sell. So um, I just wanted my like website to reflect that. Um, and then I also created an Instagram account. Now, millennialness aside, like I feel like social media can really make or break you, especially if your entire business is online like mine was. So I knew that I had to be really um, intentional and creative with my social media because there's just so much competition and I just wanted mine to kind of stand out. Um, I think for my website that was easy because most used bookstores, their sites aren't as m like a boutique. Like I feel like my website feels more of like a boutique, whereas a lot of used bookstores kind of feel like catalogs. So I knew that I had that part covered, but it was getting my social media to a place where I felt like I was comfortable. And to be honest, I'm still not comfortable with where my social media is. I know that it could be a lot better, but I don't know. I just, I'm spending so much more time on like other things. And then I do actually give myself time to read here and there. So um, I'm sure it'll like get better to where I want it to be, but um yeah, so I created an Instagram account and there are two communities that I feel like really rallied around me to help me get to where I am today. And that is one, the local Rochester community. So as soon as I got an Instagram account, I followed a bunch of small businesses that were local and they all followed me back. They all started purchasing for me. They all started sharing it, word of mouth. And I just, I'm really lucky to be in such a creative um, community that's really supportive because I feel like it's just it's something that people when they see that you put like a lot of love and passion Misa stop it please when they see that you put a lot of love and passion into something um I think they just like want to support that so definitely the Rochester community was just like really awesome and helping me kind of feel welcome and the bookstagram community so there were two distinctive profiles i remember the lion brit and the bookshelf and the nurse reader they both purchased for me shared my stuff and i just feel like from there it just kind of like blew up because they had such big like bookstagram followings um that i was getting just tons of people now i know that one of the things that sets me somewhat apart is that my packaging, which is funny, my husband actually gave me the idea for this packaging. I was trying to think like, how can I make my packaging look pretty? I'm a huge person that's big on aesthetics. And so I wanted even, I wanted the boutique experience to surpass just a website and it'd be something that's an experience when you like unbox your package. Um, and that's where we came up with like the butcher paper and the twine and the stamp. Um, it's definitely gone through like a few iterations as far as design goes. There's me so just doing his thing. Um, but yeah, I'm, I really love where I am with it right now. And I feel like people really love that part. Um, and I, obviously I know there are tons of books that are like, um, <laughs> there are tons of books that are wrapped in that, but it's more... It's not like a secret like date with a book situation. It's like you know what books you're getting and then I hand wrapped every single one and put it up in twine and stamped it and sent it on its way. So I would just like to say I just think that everything that I do with my bookstore is extremely intentional. It's all about aesthetics. It's all about experience and 
I just think that's like the type of bookstore I would have wanted to visit. So as of right now, everything is currently virtual because um, I feel like I'm in like a limbo in my life. Um, my husband graduates in May and he's been applying to a bunch of jobs in Rochester, but he's also applying everywhere just, you know, to get his first job. So we're hoping that we can stay here because I would love to open up a storefront. Um, I want to say like the end of this year before holiday season. That's like my goal. Um, but it definitely depends on where he ends up getting a job. That's like priority. Um, but yeah, I'm just, I'm really lucky. I'm really excited. I know that there wasn't a lot of planning. I mean, from the time that I came up with the second hand to the time I released it to the world was maybe a week and a half. And honestly, that was for a reason. I know myself. If you are a Myers-Briggs fan, um, I am an INFP, which essentially just means that I'm super indecisive. Um, I doubt myself a lot. I overthink everything. And I just didn't give myself that time. I didn't give myself the days and the weeks to just ruminate over all the things that could go wrong. I just kind of, that's what I want to do. I already have inventory, I'm just gonna go for it and see where it goes. And I think that there's a small part of me that believes that like things happen for a reason and the fact that it was kind of so, I mean, I wanna say effortless to get up and running was just a clear sign that this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Like I'm I'm really, really happy that this is where I am. Um, I eventually want my, store to look like the bookstore from You've Got Mail. <laughs> I used to watch it all the time and I'd be like, oh my god, this is such a cozy bookstore. Like, I want this. So that is my future plan for TSO, hopefully to open up a store front in Rochester. Um, but until then, I am just getting ready for summer. I'm doing a lot of pop-up shows and events and things like that. Um, and this will be my first year doing that type type of stuff. So I'm just excited to like get out there, meet all like the people in the community. Um, I have an, a few like other small business friends that I like can't wait to hang out with. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm very happy. Um, the holiday season was insane. I did a bunch of holiday bundles and I put up a bunch. They sold out. I put up another bunch. They sold out and then. I had to tell people like, if you want a holiday bundle, message me so I can see if I can bring it on because it was just madness. And I was running it out of my one bedroom apartment, which was even crazier. So um, since then, thankfully holidays have calmed down. Um, I'm moving into summer mindset, but I also got a studio space and I am a part of Luna Co-op in Rochester. Um, so it's just been really great to have like another space where I can have all my inventory and kind of put work separate from, um, home, you know, it doesn't overlap. I'm not getting overwhelmed when I'm seeing boxes and boxes stacked in my kitchen. Um, and I've also hired my friend who I met through Bookstagram, Sammy, um, definitely follow her account. It's Sammy's Shelf Love. She is just awesome. Um... I tell her like she is she is my she's a person that says no and has no problem saying it whereas I have every every I just get stressed out even thinking about having this house someone no and so I just give it to Sammy and she's like yeah she can't do this so she is invaluable <laughs> like invaluable um so yeah just in a short amount of time I've gone from where I started to having a decent following, um, selling out of a bunch of things. I've been featured in a few things in Rochester as far as like newspapers and podcasts. And it's just, it's been crazy. It's been a whirlwind. I don't feel like I've actually had time to let it all settle in. Um, and I don't know when that's actually going to ever happen, but for right now, I'm just happy to go along with it. And yeah, I think that's about it. If you guys have any questions or comments, definitely leave them down below. I'm going to link Sammy's, um, Sammy's Instagram account. And 
I kind of want to link like a few of my favorite like local Rochester businesses that I feel like everyone should follow because I swear Rochester is going to be that next city that's like the next Portland or something, you know, like one of those small cities that was completely undiscovered and now everyone's moving here and it's like crazy. So I'm definitely going to put in some of my favorite local small businesses, but yeah, until then, I will see you guys next week and have a good weekend. Bye.